All right, we got the truck. We're ready to go. We're ready to load up. We're ready to drive to California. We're ready to pick up an amazing amount of computer gear. We're going to look at all of that computer gear, and I'm going to tell you about a multi-thousand potentially extra dollar mistake that you probably have to just go along with at this point. So let's take a look at the trailer here. Trailer ready to go. We're ready to hit the road. So the thinking went a little bit like this. We're going to hit the road with the truck, with the trailer. We're going to take ourselves a nice kind of vacation. We're going to also, you know, enjoy our time. We're going to go to the Grand Canyon. We're going to go to Zion, do some fun stuff. This is me. And also I was going to meet up with a uh, cat most guy. That's Josh. And we were going to have a good time. So we have bought these. We have the payment cleared and all sorts of problems started pretty much today. It was like problem, 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 problem. So there was roughly 12,000 or so pounds that we were going to be picking up. Of that 12,000 pounds, we thought we might be able to get it down from 11 pallets and 12,000 pounds to maybe seven or eight pallets and about 8,000 pounds just by recycling some stuff locally in California. So this is located at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratories. This is a government facility where they research nuclear weapons, all sorts of other things like that, as well as a bunch of other types of science and high performance compute. So we were really excited because I'm gonna track down. We're gonna look at the history of these machines that we're buying. We're literally buying a super compute cluster that we're gonna have. It is gonna still be showing up. We still have bought it and it still is going to come to us. It's just the way that it's gonna happen, not quite the way that we thought. So let me show you the second problem. 4,850. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, so that's where you're running into a big problem. Uh, that was going to be us scaling down what we'd be able to bring back by a lot. That's not actually the end of where we decided not to make the driving trip. So 4,850, we thought, yeah, that's doable. Possibly, you know, we just pare down some of the stuff, keep the best of the best, strip out, you know, high performance gear that we want. Maybe that doesn't necessarily impact the bottom line in a huge way. There's a bunch of desktops and other stuff that maybe we just didn't need to keep. But at the same time, we would definitely be sacrificing some of the profit potential off of that. This is something to keep in mind before you buy something from Gov Deals, by the way. Once you buy it, you're going to be showing up to pick it up. Some facilities, whatever. This facility, not whatever. They were not going to be cool with us showing up and basically taking pieces, reorganizing it, and doing work of some sort on their facility. I said pretty much hard no to that. Can understand it. It's a uh, DOD facility. They have, you know, a lot of very important stuff going on there. But at the same time, that DOD facility does not play games. And so we're now in a situation where we're looking for full freight for this to come here. That's going to be probably a little bit extra. It may not be extra. I'm going to show you guys what's happening right now with gas costs. It's insane. Like, it is legit insane. And we FOMO'd in over the, the MD3060Es. These are 60 bay 4U units for holding drives. They're awesome. We're going to take a look at all this gear. Let's let's dive in. So just what the fuck did we buy that is going to necessitate an 18-wheeler driving it to us? Let's take a look. So buying from Lawrence Livermore National Laboratories is basically one of the premier high performance compute research facilities in the United States. So let's take a look at the one that I kind of think we bought. I can't say for sure that this is the one that we got, but I kind of think that this may be the one that we got. So if we look at some of the Intel systems that they got here, let me show you some pictures of the lot that we bought. So this is the pictures that I'm showing you just from one of the lots. We bought two lots, so we've got essentially this times two uh, with a couple of things different here and there, but for the most part, they're probably all part of the same system that uh, is my guess in whatever they're coming out of. Now, these I looked at and I thought, hmm, this is interesting. This kind of has a couple of different characteristics to it, uh, not necessarily chassis that just jump off the page that I've necessarily easily identify. However, there are some HP looking characteristics to them. So I kind of gravitated towards that. I also started looking at APRO systems because I thought, you know, I think that this was something that is high performance related. That's a good chance that some of that could have been an APRO system. So here's some of the backs. You can see some of the, uh, the power supplies on it. Note the color of the tag and the color of the tabs. 
that green color of the tabs is something that's a little bit different. Uh, we've got our rails here and yeah, that is a lot of rails. So happy to get those. This is what they are looking like right now. And so essentially they're not gonna let us cut this, move this stuff, unload it, load it, pack it. Essentially it's like bring your truck, we're forklifting it onto your truck and you're leaving. Pretty secure facility, uh, checkpoints uh, and inspections on the way in and the way out. So not really something that is ideal for me and Josh to take a trailer that does not have a flatbed characteristic to it. So yeah, having a drop gate, you can definitely not roll a uh, forklift up onto that. And the other thing is they pretty much want them gone in each lot. So that is a lot of pallets in each lot and way more pallets than would fit inside that trailer, even if it were a flat trailer. So yeah, uh, some of these are pretty high stacks also. Now let's take a look at why we, you can kind of start to see why we really got into this, this right here. So I'm gonna say it was a bit of last minute FOMO. We did not buy it for the monitors. For sure we did not buy it for the monitors. As a matter of fact, we were planning on scrapping the monitors, uh, donating them to local charities or something like that in California. And this is kind of why we were getting into it because we saw some of these machines here and I thought, yeah, you know, this is a chassis that's a super micro chassis that's been, you know, rebranded. I believe that says APPRO up there, that's APRO. Uh, that's what led me down looking up APRO and LLNL, Lawrence Livermore National Laboratories. And that led me down the rabbit hole to find what I believe is the supercompute cluster that this was all a part of. These things, don't know what these things are. Uh, if you know what the, any, hey, by the way, if anybody knows what any of this stuff is, let us know. Uh, but this right here, definitely kind of a little bit of a mystery, like uh, what what could you be? Don't know what those purple things are. I thought maybe they were some sort of a LTO system. Not sure. Uh, so yeah, not super excited. Some of the one you stuff here, I was like, mm, you know, maybe one you good, maybe one you bad. One you stuff a little bit harder to move. Uh, you can see Dell here on some of it. And so I was thinking, you know, these Dells look like R210s or, you know, something around like that. Kind of that front chassis that you can see the hard drive cage inside there. Not necessarily the most exciting stuff there. Maybe R220s, um, maybe R230s, I don't know. But probably R210s or R220s would be my guess on those. Then we get down here and start looking some more and we can see, yeah, that's some Dell cages on probably a 1U unit there. So that might be an R420. Um, yeah, so again, I, we wouldn't have bought this if it was just this stuff. And this is looking at it from the other edge and there's eight of these, eight or 10 of these uh, purple things here. So still not sure what those are exactly. Yeah, a lot of desktops. Some of them not bad. I mean, honestly, some Z-series stuff, uh, workstations, these guys, that guy, that guy, this one. Not that bad, that one down there. Uh, some really old stuff. Sun, microsystems, uh, don't even know what that one is necessarily. Uh, this incredibly old Dell. Um, question marks, uh, some Mac stuff here and there. Good. Uh, as a matter of fact, you know, there were some things that we were going to definitely be donating and recycling out of these lots to get that weight down was the plan. And this is what we were really in it for. If you know what these are, you know what these are. You want these if you're into Chia. These are 60 drives each. And this right here pictured is four of these units on each side on the bottom. So that is eight of these units and this one pallet. And these are the trays that go in them up above. I kind of wish they would have put the trays in, strapped them up, and just let it ride like that. It, it's bizarre because in one of the other ones, they actually do have it like that. Not really too much we can ask them to do here. These are the trays that you slide the drives on top of. And so this lot and the other lot both have these. These are MD3060Es. Very excited for these. These alone do make this worthwhile. We are getting a pile of these. Very excited about that. Now these right here. This is where I was looking and I was like, yeah, these guys. Yeah, no, I don't know what these are. I started looking, seeing that green tab again there. I was like, okay, maybe APRO stuff again. And then I saw some stuff here and I was like, hmm, that looks kind of like what I think might look like that. And that is an Intel Omnipath host fiber adapter, a hundred gigabit interconnect switch. So let me see if I can find on my way back to that picture here. So that's when I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. Now they make another type of this also that could be older. So it might be that type also. I don't know, but yeah, it could be one or the other. So looking at the description sheet that they provided us, which is 
woefully inaccurate also because it's missing a ton of stuff that is pictured. So this is apparently the description sheet. I started seeing some stuff that I was like, that's definitely, you know, possibly an APRO, silicon mechanics, uh, some HP gear here, some G7 stuff, not excited about that. G9 stuff, very excited about that. Again, DDR4 in those G9s. And then we get to over here and there's quite a few things on this sheet. And one of the things that stood out was this APRO here. And so here's where the search starts to get kind of interesting. So APRO was bought by Cray Cray is, of course, a high-performance compute-focused uh, supercomputer kind of company that was completed in 2012 at the end of November. So you can see here there were one, two, three, four projects it looks like possibly that they were working for and supplying parts for. However, they also went on after that as part of Cray. And so when you look at some of these, this does distinctly have kind of a HP-esque uh, look and feel to it. It's got the little yellow tabs, I believe, there, and that's usually what you see in some of the higher-end HP gear out there. Uh, I don't know if you do know what this is. Sound off below in the comments and let us know, because we either bought a pile of really old stuff, which, again, we're just going to, if that was the case, focus on the fact that we got... Where are they? Where did they go? We got these, and these are at least good, and I know where a place where I can scrap e-waste. So hopefully that's not what it is. Hopefully we got something really cool. Hopefully we got something from the APRO company, which the HPC cluster at the Lourdes Livermore National Laboratory has been using APRO even more recently than you might think. So we see the E52667 V3 line here. We can find the date for this launch. And so we see 2014 there. So if these are 2014 and that kind of would you know go along with the tesla k80s there also then it could be part of this compute node and again the vendor apro they may have just been kind of putting together pieces of other gear and working internally and cray was bought by hewlett packard back in 2019 for 1.3 billion dollars who knows uh these are some interesting things so we've either just got ourselves a pile of who knows what coming to us we definitely have a pile of who knows what coming to us Will we be able to reconstruct any of this? So this would be a E5 2680V2, less excited if that is what these turned out to be by orders of magnitude, again, then just focusing on the fact that we got some really good deals on some disc shelves. However, if they turn out to be these, then that is actually a pretty nice thing because as you know, V3s come with that DDR4. DDR4 is something that has pretty good value to it. So. Digging around, I've got to say, there's a bunch of information. I've got more digging to do. I haven't even read through like some of these yet. But they talk about the specific programs, the specific products, and also the vendors of those specific products. Hopefully, we're looking at something like the Omnipath. We could be looking at QDR InfiniBand also. They talk in detail about the Omnipath solution. A little bit harder to find some of their QDR solutions that they were using. And certainly, we, I don't think... Are going to be getting any gear uh, along with this that is networking so if that turns out to be the way that it is then who knows what we've bought really who knows what we've bought did this turn out to be a bad thing that we won't be able to drive out there let's take a look at the state of gas costs throughout the united states right now so gas is not in a happy spot throughout the united states uh especially actually as you drive from texas towards the west the intended route that we were planning on taking, uh, you see the gas prices rising almost to the press up as you hit the California region where I have some people telling me that it's as high as 625 right now. Um, so the gas was going to add up to be a lot. You should definitely check out Gas Buddy. Uh, certainly not seeing drastically cheap prices right around this area. And so this was the planned route kind of up here and then coming back down through here. Uh, let's look at that exact route here. So the 2015 Ram 1500, 5.7 Hemi, while a powerful uh, engine is going to get pulling the trailer, I did a test, about seven miles per gallon best case and more than likely about five miles per gallon once it was loaded down. And that's some uphill and downhill driving through this route also. And as you can see here, these stops, this is like stopping 
every single gas station around the way that you can find. Even possibly I was thinking of taking some gas cans along because it seemed a little bit sketch. Uh, the cost, $22.93. Ouch. Uh, that was just the gas cost. Uh, that might have gone up uh, because we were going to take five days to get there. Probably a couple of days to break things down, recycle stuff, and then five days to get back. So yeah, could have risen while we were there as well, possibly. Um, also got to factor in the stay at places, eating, everything else that goes along with a vacation and traveling. It's just not cheap. And so we're looking at no less than four to 4,500 uh, is what we pretty much know already for the professionals to ship this to us. So we've already kind of factored that in. Uh, this is probably just gonna be the best thing to do. And also there will be all of it coming to us. So there will not have to be some, you know, potentially drastic choices about what to keep and what to get rid of made on the fly in essentially the Bay Area region of California. Recycling these tech products in California may be a little bit hard since we are neither one residents of California. Also, did do some calling around. It's a little bit unclear whether or not I have to have an ID to go to some of these recycling facilities, but I'm gonna guess that answer is probably yes, given that it's California. A lot of them are uh, by appointment only. So that also adds some logistics things also to it because I don't know exactly when we would be able to show up. So we were gonna have to take things if we did the trip move them to another storage facility or some sort of staging facility somewhere, I don't know, uh, and break them down, sort them, recycle them lot by lot, make multiple trips on and off. Again, that's not gonna be possible because government is gonna government. And they don't want us screwing around, which at the end of the day, I think I've gotta understand and respect that also. And so that's a bummer because I was hoping to stop by many people while I was on the road. We were also going to be stopping by the Grand Canyon, and I was really looking forward to that. I've never been there. And also going to Zion and getting some great film and some photos and doing some solar chia farming on the road. Got my little solar setup running again here, so probably have some more videos on that. Now I've got it all the way up and running again. Have it on an SSD this time, so I think that it's going to be a little bit better than when I was trying to use it on the 5 terabyte spinner. Of course, less space on it because only two terabytes versus five terabytes. But at the end of the day, I don't think either one of those is gonna be like really great. But if it's completely off grid, that allows us to see some cool things and it allows us to have a completely disconnected node like that a lot. If you know what these things are, hop on the Discord, links to the Discord below. Let me know what the hell they are. If you wanna just drop it in the comments, drop it in the comments. If you wanna tell me what it is on Twitter, at GoSpaceport, the website, you really can't tell me what it is there, but cool things are in the works on the website, and that is digitalspaceport.com. This is also exciting because we're getting all of it here. So what are we going to get? There's only one way to know, folks, and that is to hit like, subscribe, and be sure to ring that bell so you get notified there's going to be an 18-wheeler of who knows what the fuck showing up.